Now, we, what's your second name, William? Uh, Lomas. Lomas, yeah. yeah. Yeah, William Lomas. Um, now, we're up in the far north, and we have William Lomas here, and he is just the keenest, keenest fisherman. In fact, he really reminds me of when I was a young fella, and um, in fact, pretty much, like, I, I see so many similar things in myself and you. Yeah. Um, I started off the same as you. I was a wharf rat. Um, did lots of kingy fishing, lots of kawai, um, John Dory, all the rest of it. Trevally. Although, yeah, Trevally. Although I was a bit unlucky in that I, I was um, started off in Wellington, which of course is a pretty crap place to be. Yeah. Um, but here we are, and like you've just got uh, more and more skills, and now you know we've we've um, come along because we've recognised just what a talent you are, yeah. and um, you've got into your soft baiting, you got into your kingies, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. What I know, you, you've actually chosen to use some of our gear. What do you like about our products, our Z-Mans in particular, and which ones do you like and why? Uh, so the reason I like them is they don't, well, they're pretty much indestructible. Yep. You can't break them. You can catch, like, mm. whole day's worth of fish on them, still use them the next day. And stretchy, super stretchy, not leather jacket proof. Yep. And we saw that so, today, didn't we? Like, yeah. we were out there, and there was, like, a cloud <laughs> It was of like leather, leather jackets, jackets everywhere. And, and I went, thank God we're using Z-Man because anyone else's, they would have just had <laughs> chunks bitten out of them and we would have been forking out dollars big time, wouldn't yeah, we? Pretty much. But yeah, I stuck with pretty much the same Z-Man all day. Just opened one up from each packet and just keep switching. But yeah, they're probably one today. I got a snapper on this one. And that's the first time you've used it, isn't it? Yeah. That's, first this time. is the door matter door. And I'm actually really pleased he gave it a go. In fact, I, it was on my rod because yesterday I cast out and the first time I've ever used a door matadors and the first time uh, I've definitely ever used that orange one. Cast it out and it was sinking down. Next moment my line is just smoking across the surface yeah, and I went, watch, holy eh? hell, and, and wound up quickly. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Had the biggest run. Smoke. Uh, Great big, uh, I thought it might have been a kingfish and we ended up uh, getting having to chase it and uh, pulled it in, it was like almost 20 pounds. So I went, I'm so glad that you managed to go and see that this is yeah. pretty good. Because like I caught some today on this as well, didn't I, when yeah. we were out deep. Yeah, we so, did a few. So that one there, the Door Matadors, um, that's obviously in Atomic Sunrise. So that's one for the future for you, isn't it? Yeah, that's for Okay, good. what would you normally use though? What's your day to day? Like, we'll, we'll look at that one later. Uh, but what about your what about your day to day? What's, what's yeah. the one that's going to bring home the bacon for you, mate? Well, normally I'm just fishing along East Beach, which is normally sand and mm. just sort of low-lying fowl. So I normally go for the little four-inch curly tail. The motor oil, I got a... Because that one's a bruised banana, but yeah. you like motor oil, eh? Yeah. That really does it well, for Motor you. oil is my go-to colour, but bruised banana, new penny, mm. they're also pretty good. What do you think makes them, you know, why do they like that particular style and colours? Uh, well, it's not too big of a bait. Yep. And it's, and it's still got, like, the motion at the end, like the jerk shads. Got the two little finger bits at the end. So yeah, just, and, just, and they're really feeding on little critters in there, aren't yeah. they? Like, they're feeding on like shellfish, shellfish and, yeah. and crabs and sea worms and stuff. stuff like that. Yeah, so this is the perfect bait for, you know, just dragging along the bottom and giving it little twitches, it just pops up. And they're buoyant, so they sit up like that and that just sort of flickers away. Yep. So, do you find they work better on a certain weight of um, light bulb or do you just, or uh, do you find it's uh, particular? Normally I run about one ounce, oh, not one ounce, half an ounce. So three eight with these. Yeah, I'm what depth fishing. are we talking about for that? Like, um, just to give probably everyone an idea. Twenty to ten meters. Just yep. Yeah, yeah. ten meters. Ten to fifteen is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. For half an ounce and yeah, normally. But yeah, obviously if it's windier, just put on a heavier jig head. And what what sort of size fish do you catch on on you know like what can you catch them up to with that? Well, on the during the lower masters, I got a eighteen. On oh, one of those? 18 pound on yeah, a motor oil. Jesus. Yeah, that's well, pretty good. That's, that is real good, mate. Like, I, I, I can honestly say I've never caught one that big yeah. on there. I have caught some big kingies on them, but not, not snapper. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I was stoked along that, East Beach. My biggest snapper along there. So, yeah, a little motor oil. Now, if you were targeting, uh, say, a larger fish, what would you be more likely to use? Probably this one. Yeah. I've caught a few big snappers on this. So, for people who don't know, that's motor oil. It's a seven inch, and um, I, you know, why, why do you like that one? What makes it worthwhile? What, what, what actually attracts those big snapper, do you reckon? 
I have no idea. Well, I mean, just for a start, so it's good. big, isn't it? Like, it's yeah. quite big. And for people who don't know, when you hold it up to the light, it changes a different colour, doesn't it? it goes like, like, it goes sort of greeny, yeah, dark, yeah. dark green. And have you ever shone, like, a UV torch on it? Yeah, it glows. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so there's all these different things that we don't really understand also that just make water. this work. Because, like, I mean, that just looks like a hunk of green snot, really, doesn't yeah. it, when you hold it like that? A bit of weed or something, yeah. you know? So that motor oil, just spectacular. Yeah. And you were saying you like this one at the moment yeah, too. I've been going. I've never really used this colour, electric chicken. Mm. But lately it's been going pretty good. Just over Henderson Bay on the fowl, big seven inch. Yeah. Yeah, and we were saying that decent. the uh, leather jackets don't uh, cause any damage, but this one actually yeah. did. <laughs> this one did. <laughs> <laughs> so curse you leather jackets. Yeah. Yeah, but man, this one, I don't know, it goes good along East Beach too on the yep. slightly bigger fish. Do you, I reckon part of the reason why, mate, is that they light up just the same as these do yeah. when you put a UV torch on it. So that could be something. Yeah. And maybe that brightness, you know, stands just out better. colours, I don't know. And, and just like you were saying before, Sparkly. because they, they raise up, you know, when you've got that jig head here and you've got this great big lure just waving around there, you know, yeah, like that's like current. a signpost saying, you know, come and eat me, come and yeah. eat me. So I can, I can understand why that happens. So yeah, the jig head's just on the head and it just flops up. If you give it a little twitch, it just... Yep. It's almost like, they've, I, I've seen them down there and it's almost like they're feeding on something, you know, like yeah. um, it really Digging imitates a head. fish, you know, really well. Yeah. Yeah. But down on, and on the drop sometimes too, also obviously. Also this one. So that one today, you, you're actually introduced to this today, like, um, how did we, like we said to you that um, if you use that though, there's a certain strategy you have to deploy. Um, oh, do you remember cool. what it is? Shrimp bomb? No, shrimp's attack, mate. Oh, shrimp's attack. Yeah. When you cast it out, like to get the full benefit, gotta shrimp's eat. attack, when you chuck that on. Got to scream it. Cause you do, and you got a real good one, eh? you got yeah. a nice uh, snap on it. After I said that, I was just like twitching it up, just <laughs> like a, not a kingy jig, but you know, that sort of action, but real slow. And yes, like halfway up, a snapper come and grabbed it. Because it's um, like on a tough day, it was actually a bit of a tough day today. I think we got about 20 between the three of us, so it was yeah. tougher than usual, um, up to about 10 or 11 pound probably. Um, but I think it's those legs and feelers and stuff, yeah. don't you? you know, just like, wobbling around. Yep. Also the tail. I've had quite a bit of luck on the, mm. what's the glow one called? Uh, glow new chilt, new no, pilchard glow chicken. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh po' boy. Po' boy. Yep. Yeah, I've had quite a bit of luck on this one, on the po' boy one. <clears> the <throat> glows and just East Beach. It just seems to work well really, really early in the morning. Oh, okay. Because that's, yeah. re that's really interesting because there's another one that's not quite the same uh, family. Um, I can't even remember what the bloody name of it is, but it is um, it is luminous with just that chartreuse tail. It's a bit like Po' Boy, but without the sort of sparkly bits oh, yeah. in it. And this guy um, in Little Barrier Island, he just slays them early morning. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that, there must be something, you know, something really similar, you know, about that sort of like white colour with the chartreuse tail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, look, that's so cool, mate. That's, um, uh, I think, I think that uh, that... That selection there is a really interesting one, and I, and it just shows the versatility of the range. And um, I'm really pleased that you're you know learning like um, you know all the different. Uh, I mean, because you never know what's going to happen from day to day, do you? Because like nah. one day it can be never one know. color and or, and one size, and then the next yep. day it's completely different. So you can't just have one packet, can you? Nah, you got to have a good selection. You never know what's going to happen on the day. So yeah, just try them out. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't really. Pick that thing to catch fish, <laughs> but when you chuck it on, you're quite just surprising. Just comes to life, eh? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really awesome. So that's Laguna Shrimp, that particular one. Yeah. Oh, you know, thank you so much for uh, for right. that. Like, um, as you can see, William's got um, you know so much experience beyond his years, and uh, I can see some big things for him uh, in the future um, if he keeps up this uh, same degree of enthusiasm and drive. Uh, certainly there's not many people I know um, at his age who have done so much. You, you've got your, you've yeah. got your truck coming up soon, mate. You've already yeah. got your boat and your motor. Yeah, so he's going to be he's going to be very dangerous soon. And um, I, I can see a lot, of a lot of trouble for fish in the future. Yeah, all so, over the show. Thanks very much, mate. I really no appreciate you using our stuff. Thank and, you. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you, as I say, you've got some big things ahead of you. And um, yeah. I can't wait to come back up here and fish with you again. It's always good fun. Thank you. Appreciate it.